I uh, thought it was a cartoon. Um, when I came in, it was before I'd gotten my first uh, PC sound card. I didn't even realize there was voice in it. When I came in, there wasn't anyone in at that point. And uh, I didn't even realize it was a, um, a chat where multiple people could uh, come in. Yeah, I mean, after all, it was 1993. You can get inside of here, and if you spend a lot of time in here, you begin to adapt very readily to a, a completely different set of, of, of environmental rules. Uh, and actually, to me, it does become another reality, a second reality or a separate one. Inside of here, we are an anonymous being, and we can conduct ourselves as such. Very slowly, uh, the human mind will subconsciously adapt to this environment, and as it does, you don't notice um, the changes that are occurring while you're in here. You're not the same person in here. If we were actually in here, and all of the criteria that we have here, like there's no death, there's no injury, there's no physical pain, there's no hunger, there is with the operator, okay? But the, my avatar never gets hungry. It doesn't need to breathe air. Um, if all of these things were the reality and this was the so-called fantasy part that we live in, the physical part, we would have to completely abandon all of our ideas and, and come up with a whole new set of uh, of coping mechanisms. This right here to me seems like the conceptualization of what heaven would be like. It causes us uh, to exist in two worlds at the same time. You have the real world, what we call the real world, and then you have this world. The more time you spend in here, the, the more the line gets blurred. The addiction, is, it's really, I mean, if you, want, if you have an addictive personality and you want to uh, put it somewhere where it's uh, safe, <laughs> come on in here. You'll love it. <laughs> and they tell you if you have two real friends in your life, you're really lucky. I have so many of them here that I can't imagine my life without Traveler now. Uh, there, are, there are qualities in many of these people that are admirable, and I refuse to do without Traveler because of it, because of the people. That's why we're here. And, of course, my wife. I'm, I'm her biggest fan. So, But I get to admire her on and off, you know, Traveler. Yeah, it seems like you've got some uh, your idols here in the room right now. Which is uh, probably why I should ask some of these questions to uh, Fast Eddie as well. Hold on a sec. Yeah, thanks for waiting there, Fast Eddie. Uh, you've probably been listening to all these questions and stuff. Just wondering if you had anything to add, perhaps your own first, uh, your own first day that you discovered on Life Traveler, and if you had any impressions or dreams when you first approached the space. What's your personal story about it? Okay, um, I saw the program on the site.com. I came in through that portal. A lot of people were coming in through M MTV and NEC and some of the other larger corporate sponsors that have since left. Um, I'm not a great typist, but that's not really the issue to me. The issue is the absolute and total sense of presence. When you come up to someone and their voice uh, gets louder, you can tell from their voice whether they're upset or not. You know this person or you get to know this person and you can tell when they're tired or when they're hungry or anxious or there's something wrong in their voice. It far exceeds the ability in, in, in anything that I've ever seen and I have looked at a lot of things. And, and uh, uh, this is a collective intellect. Every time 
the traveler. If you have any your your headphones on, you're going to learn something. Um, we have had soccer games. We have had funerals. We have had weddings. We have had any number of events, live bands playing playing songs. Um, this format permits any number of things. But I don't believe that any of this would be here if there wasn't really a community. There is no money in Traveler. Nobody's ever made a nickel. Uh, and the bottom line is we're here because we like our friends and we want to come see our friends. The, the training here in social skills alone is a valid tool. I've seen numerous people come in here with problems, attitudes, issues, and begin to realize that they talk too fast, they type too fast, they're too hyper, they need to slow down, they need a little more patience. Um, we, we help people with their homework, we, we swap recipes, uh, we, we share the pain when it comes. Uh, we talk about our pets, we talk about our family, we talk about our problems and our jobs. There are so many things going on on so many levels here. There are romantic interludes. Uh, there are people who've met here, um, and uh, some of which have gotten married. You know, it, it, it has uh, it has changed many people's lives. It has very deeply changed my life. Uh, if this were gone, man, I don't know what we'd do. Um, I came into Traveler in the beginning of 1996, right after the very first beta, the, the very first beta they allowed 50 users uh, to come and help. And uh, I, I just I just did miss that because I had to wait until I got my first Pentium uh, to be able to use Traveler. And it was a P100 with 16 mega RAM and we were talking on a 14.4 modem. Uh, so that was uh, quite a while back. Uh, there still is no socializing application like this one. There were a lot of really big names. They they probably paid through the nose for their license. I'm talking about ten thousand dollars minimum to uh, to host a traveler server. Uh, but they were contributing to the net, and uh, they were also furthering their own is in, you know interest. Say if they wanted to you know have a an MTV promotion of some sort, you know things like that. Um, ABC Monday Night Football. You know, and they had a place for where people could come you know, and, and talk about football and things like that. Um, OnLive went out of business probably in 1998, the beginning of 1998, uh, which is about the same time that Osgate came into being, uh, purchased a domain in, uh, I think, May of 1998. Uh, but we don't consider our official birthday until August 30th of 1998. That's when we got our, our first 75 user license. Uh, from the powers that be that were left. Um, and so what was left of OnLive was folded up into another company along with uh, Electric Communities and um, the Palace, and they formed um, Communities.com, and they had to go Chapter 11 also. And so once again, the online domain uh, was off the net, and they were literally hauling computers and desks and, and things like that out of the building. I mean, they they literally took the, the servers out of the building and all the old old code and everything that was on the machines and shipped the machines off to other places that were, you know, where the disks were wiped and, and, and used for other companies. So a lot of a lot of old code and, and history like that was lost in the process. But I mean, uh, we didn't let it die before when that happened, and we weren't going to let it die again this time. So. So br along came Bruce uh, Bruce Dammer. He got there just in the nick of time, secured uh, ownership of the platform. So once again, the, the, the community has av averted destruction. And I think the whole internet's full of extremely uh, lonely people. That's why we all do congregate. Um, and there's days when we just want to be alone, but yet we want to feel somewhere. Um, 
I've had lots of people go and just sit in some of these rooms that I've made the more um, depressing rooms. Um, and they just sit there for hours. Uh, the song in the room, you know, touches them in some way. Or, um, oh gosh, there's one room. Um, one room. I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> but uh, a grown man sitting in there crying. And I'm, you know, I'm like, what? He said, I, I understand this room. And, you know, that, and that's what's fun. That's the kind of rooms I enjoy doing are the ones that kind of that disturb people. And I enjoy those. Um, if I get somebody upset by, by a piece of, you know, a work that I do, I win. I mean, I did good because they understand and it did touch them. Uh, I'm sorry sometimes it depresses them. Uh, but sometimes it's also um, a place where they can go and, and get in touch with their self. A lot of times two or three people will just go in there and sit and discuss the room and then end up in discussions about uh, things that's happened in their lives. We don't always need the soda pop room where people can go in and be cheerful and happy. Um, we're, we're very emotional people, of uh, beings, so I think we need all kind of rooms. If I uh, go near you, um, it'll make a bong sound. That's the same thing in real life. You know, we have this personal space. We have a certain area around us that uh, that we feel like if, if somebody gets in that, we feel like they're in our personal space. So something, one of the main things that makes you feel like you're really here. And that, what that does is that, even just with the physical presence, there are other programs that have that, but they don't have the feeling of actually having personal space. A much, much more uh, personal space here. You, you know you have it. If I run into you right now, you're going to go, you're going to feel it. You're going to know I ran into you. You're going to move, uh, just like you wouldn't realize. So you do feel like you have a presence, more of a presence in this program. It feels more intimate than than any other program I've ever uh, been in. Okay, well, I'm Lynn Traveler. Since I've been on here, it's changed my life in one in one big way. Um, I have a social anxiety problem. Um, I actually take pills for it. Um, I go outside. I have panic attacks um, when I see a lot of people. Um, when I came on online traveler, I had to say in the first week that I've been on here and I started socializing with people, um, it's made it easier for me to um, talk to people when I'm outside in the real world. Um, and people are just awesome on here and they're easy to talk to. I mean, outside, there's a lot of buttholes and a lot of, a lot of you know, a lot of mean people. But I learned how to um, open myself up to people in the world and uh, socialize a lot better than before. And my... Uh, I've actually caught talk to my doctor, and I, he cut down on my medication evidence. Before Traveler, well, let's see, before I was out on Traveler, I was a um, campaign manager for different, some different candidates in politics. I, um, like I said, and I gave uh, these parties at these hotels for people, and uh, I would, you know, get them organized. I'm more, I, I'm an organizer. And I guess you would call me, well, they refer me as, a, I guess I'm a leader. I've been referred to as a leader. And um, and you're going to laugh when I tell you this, but a long time ago, when I first got on here, I was referred to as baby is a calling card. Baby is a calling card. You know what that meant? That meant put baby in a room and you're going to get a crowd. Now, why, I don't know. The biggest challenge, the biggest challenge of overcoming traveler, I guess, was when, well, I had to start out. I had to start out from somewhere, and uh, I knew that what I wanted to do uh, when I start, got involved, I, I got to, the, like I said, I've worked all the service, but my first impression was when I got to WWP, I saw the big guitar, the big entrance and all that, and then I began to get friends, and uh, right in this room right now, I I can look over there and I have a friend that's that hard over there. I've known her since for five and a half years. 
we got this crowd. What are we going to do with them? Let's entertain them. Uh, let's do this. And the challenge was, can I do it? Can I, can I give things to make these people happy? Because I just love them. I love, I love these people up here. I don't just take them for granted. I don't take these avatars. They're not just avatars. That's, that's people I know, and I love them. And I thought, can I really do it? And because nobody else was doing much about it. And I thought, can I really do it? Can I start giving things and they really come, really have fun? And, yep, I did. I started giving things. And let's have that dance type thing. You had to learn we learned how to dance with these avatars and all this kind of stuff. And I just, I mean, I just started, let's have a party. Let's do this tonight. Let's start playing music. Let's do this. And they helped me. And, but like I told you last night in a conversation that wasn't taped, I am only as good as the people that helped me. And I had lots of help. And I had some, I have good friends. I love those people. And they helped me. And they helped me. Well, anytime I give something that it's a success because they helped me. But it was a challenge. Oh, yes, it was to start out something new and start out giving. That's, that's a challenge. That's a big challenge. And like I told you, soon I was considered, uh, they called, they referred to me as a calling card because they like, they, wherever I was, they thought, oh, there's going to be fun. If the baby's there, oh, let's go there. She's going to think of something. And I had to think of something, and that's a challenge. Because I had to think of something to keep these people coming in and wanting to have more and fun. And it worked. Yeah, it's important because we have access to so many more people out there than the um, than we have. In my case, I'm a housewife. Uh, you know, I go to the grocery store. I might say hi to the person behind the counter and walk away with my groceries and come home. That's my interaction with people for the day. Um, you know, on a normal basis, with just uh, if I didn't have a computer, let's say. But uh, I mean, here, I mean, I mean, we have we have millions of people we have a chance of coming in contact with. Um, a lot of those people are very truthful in who they say they are and this and that, and um, a lot of them are, are here, I think, on just a game type, you know, I've met a lot of liars, let's put it that way, um, so, um, but yeah, I mean, we just have access to so many more people, it's going to have a big play in our life. Um, I think the most important thing in anybody's life, first of all, to start is waking up and knowing you're alive. Um, it's a pretty crazy world today. Um, uh, I have family, um, but my pri priority when I, get, when I wake up in the morning is to uh, take care of my hygiene and that stuff. But uh, after that's done, the first thing that's on my mind is online traveler. Um, if I'm not online traveler, I'm either sleeping or maybe watching a movie, but I'm usually on here. This is, this is definitely a big part of my life, and this is really one of the things I live for. This is, you know what I'm saying? I remember one time we were over in uh, Utopia and um, there were seven of us and we were around in a circle and we solved every single problem in the world in seven hours. <laughs> And it was a constant conversation, and everybody gave their opinion, and then one would pick up on it and go on to something else. And we had different degrees of intelligence, you know, uh, some very high IQs, some just uh, normal IQs, and um, uh, very, very interesting conversations going in here. We have individual birthdays. In fact, I have a, 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 a room. It's a big, pretty room, and it circles their name. And it's called Birthday Bash, and it circles the, the name. Happy birthday, whoever it is. Happy birthday, star. Happy birthday, who's the other night, and, and, and all that. 
Yes, any birthday. And just like, for instance, we had a beautiful um, thing. It wasn't a, I would say it wasn't a happy thing, but the um, uh, September 11th that day, well, to, to do that, to make a little more thing, we made a room, had a room made, and all of the pictures as they took were taken from the scene, and they're all around this as a gallery. It's called Angels Cry, and we had everybody in there. I mean, they came, and we played the songs. I think every singer that sings made a song about it, and we took turns to play ten. You know, we played a different one, but there were songs about that, and we give a memorial um, thing about that. And um, okay, for instance, we had a very a person that was been on here a long time and she passed away with cancer. We gave a memorial thing for that. I mean, we not only just give the good time things, we do the things that uh, they're sad, but we give memorials to them. And, put, and but that, that uh, uh, you know, about blowing up the twin, the towers, it's a, the room is very touching. It will, it, it will hit you when you go in. And we um, had that program that night. So it's not just all happy things, but it's uh, recognizing even the sad things. That was a surprise party that I had no idea was coming. Um, that was a birthday party uh, that I didn't know they were planning. And um, uh, the woman was trying to keep me out of that. I said, oh, there's a bunch of people over in, in that space. Why don't we go over there? And she says, oh, why don't you wait a little while and hang out over here with me? And, you know, after a while, I said, well, I'm going to go on over there. And I, I'm, I just, you know, head first went on in uh, unannounced. And, and I, when I went in, it was a spectacle. There were, um, gosh, probably 18 other avatars, and they all looked just like me. So I was pretty weirded out. It was quite cool. My wife had planned that for me. She, she coordinated that little uh, event. I was in the drag strip, and we were holding uh, the races. Now that is something that a lot of avatars, uh, a lot of people, took very seriously. Uh, they would get into heated exchanges about it and things like that, um, you know, because some people were lagged and they saw somebody else, you know, crossing the finish line first and things like that. And they, somebody would be invariably would be playing "We Are the Champions," you know. Um, so it, it was it was kind of cool. Oh man, we even park our heads in here at night. Um, we, uh, it's kind of neat if I wake up in the middle of the night um, and I can just, you know, walk through the room and, and click on the um, program and, and Meister's laying there sleeping, you know, with his avatar asleep. It's nice to just, uh, um, I don't know, have that constant connection with somebody. So really, uh, we could stay in here for days if we wanted to, but usually we log off and, and go ahead about our business and stuff. So. Uh, but I'd say the longest time that that um, I've been here without logging off is probably oh heck we had a marathon one time for a whole weekend um, a few years back so I'd say about three days. Meister, were you around for that? I know OT was. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. I was on here for at least two days without any sleep for most that's the most I ever done on here. <laughs> but, um, but as far as being logged on, we, we stayed logged on. I believe we stayed logged on for <laughs> um, dang near a week, or, or better sometimes, um, without actually logging off the program. In my mind, this is reality. Um, you know, albeit virtual. But okay, let's say we we hold church here in Traveler. We have. Uh, you remember how we were talking about the carnival where we had different events, um, storytelling or drag races or what have you. Um, you know, uh, there are people that I've known in Traveler for seven years, and that certainly is community. Um, because we allow no abuse, as opposed to complete anarchy, we, we have a rule set. And uh, certainly that is, that is the beginning of civilization, that is the beginning of culture. Um, there are a lot of people who come in here seeking answers. Hey, I'm trying to do this, 
has anybody else done it? I mean, it's a it's a real mecca for mines like no other. Well, we were playing one night over in repair. Alan had just put that room up a couple of months before, and there was a group of us over there. There was eight of us, I think. And all of a sudden, we decided that uh, we were playing truth or dare around the fireplace on the rug. We were all sitting on the Oh, sorry, cough. We were sitting all around the rug, and we were playing truth or dare. And all of a sudden, Tanami says, how about if we have a seance? So uh, we uh, all went over to this one little table that's beside a bed, and we're all sitting around the table, and we're having this seance, believing that we're having we're holding each other's hands and <laughs> uh, looking at a, a candle. And that didn't work out too well. So then we decided we were going to have an exorcism. <laughs> we had Seek lay down on the bed and shut his eyes. And we were doing all these exorcism things, you know, saying different things and making our avatars go back and forth toward him and things like that. And we had uh, quite a lot of fun doing that for, oh, about two hours, yeah. I'm known on Traveller um, as Steve. Um, it happens to be my real name. I'm not very imaginative with names. I hail from uh, you know, Australia, uh, Brisbane and Queensland in particular. I've now been doing this church service in Traveller for uh, just over four years. Particip participation is very good. Um, and quite frankly, I don't care if there's one person in the room or the room is full. I suppose I do have a format. I, I start off with, with the Lord's Prayer. And I, and I use the Lord's Prayer because um, most people will know it, um, if not f other than just their, their, their um, childhood. But the, but the Lord's Prayer is a very important prayer, in my opinion. Um, but it can be abused. We, we, we have a tendency to just rattle off without actually thinking what the Lord's Prayer is actually saying. So, yes, I mean, that's the first thing that we do. Um, the second thing, the next stage we go into is I will ask anybody um, that, that if they need prayer. Um, I will always get messages um, sort of saying, you know, my child is sick, you know, could you pray for me? Um, so we will spend a couple of minutes uh, in prayer for... Um, for people that need it. It could be themselves, their family members or friends. Um, as far as the sermons are concerned, the teaching, it's very, very basic. Um, it's basically gospel. It's, it's basically what, um, what God has done for mankind uh, in the form of Jesus. Um, I don't go through any, any depth uh, because, quite frankly, I don't know it. Um, my, my main focus is just basically telling people what Jesus did for them. Um, I will then, um, towards the end, I will, um, I will read, um, I will explain um, how somebody becomes a Christian and I will give a very quick background as to what it means to be a Christian and then I will read a prayer um, for, for those that want to say it, um, that they can they can repeat this prayer after me, and it's a prayer of salvation. Um, I suppose the whole focus of the Bible is basically saying is if we were to summarise um, the question, I suppose the Bible uh, summarises is: Are you ready? Are you ready for the second coming, uh, for when Christ returns? And and I suppose. In all of my messages, that's the main focus. If I was to focus on anything, that's what I would focus. The difference that, you know, the, the choices that have to be made. Because whether we, whether we believe God or not, as I said, God is either real or he's not. If he is real, he has said through his word that um, his son, Jesus, is going to return to judge all mankind. And I don't want any of my friends any of my family members not to be with me in heaven. So that, I suppose, is, is the most predominant uh, feature of my uh, sermons, if, if I was to summarize. Uh, all of us regulars can't imagine why this isn't propagated around the world. Well, certainly this everything we do here is global by its very nature, but why aren't there more traveler servers all around the world? Uh, why isn't everybody doing this? I, I, I can't imagine. Um, 
you know, I can understand why big business doesn't really want back this, but I can't understand why the general populace won't. I think it's mainly because most people don't know about it. Um, but yeah, it it, do, it is intimidating for a lot of newbies. You know, they come in and it's just too real. Um, I don't I don't think the problem is it's, that it's surreal. Uh, I think that it's it's too real. Um, they're intimidated. These these are people who came from the text chat world, and now, um, you know, they they feel actually confronted. You know, even though that in the atmosphere they 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 feel um, invaded. You know, they they feel like people are actually in the room or or. Um, you know, or they're they're expected to behave a certain way, or things like that. It's it's uh, it's too real for them. Um, I really thought these spaces were made on your kitchen table um, with little cardboard cutouts and stuff. And then there was some way that they had little cameras. I mean, I had it all figured out in my head how they were done. Of course, I had no clue that there was 3D software out there and you had to put textures on on uh, models and blah, blah, blah. Um, but that's how I learned. And I would probably have never built another one um, after the first one if uh, um, people didn't like, like it so much. Um, you know, the encouragement that everybody gave me with the space and how much they loved it is, uh, you know, what made room number two. So room number two led to room number 60. Uh, uninvited would probably be the most shocking. In fact, I think they, asked, they renamed it on me um, without my permission at one of the other servers. But it was called Uninvited. Uh, and it, it happened I was I was uh, seeing somebody here online that um, was very, very, very jealous. I mean, this man, if I could just be sitting here quiet and he would be accusing me of, of being in messages with people that I had absolutely no clue who they even were, um, I was smothered by this person. And so uh, the song Uninvited, I listened to it one day. I'd heard the song forever, um, but one day I actually listened to it and, and had to build a space for it. Um, whenever you come into the room, you, you actually land in a little cage with keys that, that float around the, the cage. Um, and it represented being caged, and, and all I really had to do was say, go away to this person, but I couldn't. Um, and so it was right there in reach. I just couldn't get it out. Um, if you looked up the cage, which very few people actually look up when they land in a room. I like to put things up in the air uh, for those people that do like to explore. Uh, but if you look up, you'll see this um, uh, type of demon thing holding the rope of this cage. Um, along the walls, you'll see a woman screaming up into the sky. This room was one of the first ones that Traveler had ever seen like this. Um, they were more into the social rooms. Um, I had people, t you know, ask me, what is this room about? And I wouldn't tell nobody, you know, because it was my emotion that I needed to put out. Um, and it was fun. It's fun. It's fun to sit there and, and put on a different avatar that they don't know and just kind of sit there in the shadows and listen to their, you know, their discussions on the room. And, oh, boy, they come up with a bunch of different explanations for the room. Very few people ever really understood it. Um, but it's fun. It's, it's fun. With some rooms, especially... Uh, the fractal one, uh, that's got special meaning to a few people. Uh, the old Doom rooms which I've made, you know, they hold nostal nostalgic value. Uh, this avatar I'm wearing actually is, is a remake of the original pink thing from Doom, which of course was a two-dimensional two sprite. And this is more like a, a three-dimensional flesh of it. And uh, we had some fun making this, I can tell you. Uh, me and one of the other avatar designers when I actually first made this, um, it was about 50 foot tall, and we uh, we took some really amazing pictures of it because it, it just took up the entire room. Uh, uh, yes, some people do like particular rooms, and you'll find that um, what they'll do if they're a new user, if they if they see one of your rooms and they particularly like it, they'll set that as what's called their their home world. So as whenever they want to travel up, it'll take them into it. Um, uh, some people like this one because they find it calming. 
uh, but other people hate it because it, it just drives them drives them insane. Um, the um, triangles everywhere. Lots of people like that because it's very mathematical, and there's a lot of beauty in mathematics. If you think about it, we're all running off mathematics at the moment. Everything within Traveller is running off mathematics of some description. So, um, you know, when you've got a mathematical equation which is expressed, uh, someone who is uh, into mathematics or into fractal design is going to like that room more than someone who isn't. You know, because they will they will get a deeper meaning from it than than other people would. That's why most of my rooms are, well, all my rooms are quite varied. You know, there's no real theme to my rooms. Um, they all tend to be you know, totally different um, designs or impressions of, of thoughts, which I've had. What, what the online um, aspect of my personality is, is really an expression of what my mind cannot express within the real world. Um, the way the rooms I've created and the hotels I've created are ideas and thoughts made solid, not semi-solid, because you can fly through them, um, in a virtual world. Um, I consider them to be completely different um, in to they're completely different to me in um, in the ways um, you know the real world's a real world and the virtual world isn't a replacement or isn't a, really an escape. It's more of a, an expression of what my mind cannot convey uh, in a physical, you know, physical presence. I don't know how to explain that. This is really difficult. Um, well, if you look in the floor, <laughs> Uh, this room still gets to me in fact, so um, if you look down, you'll see an angel face down in what's supposed to be a, um, ice. Um, there's a, a stairway um, over uh, behind you. This song was made um, for a friend of mine. Um, who basically had to uh, um, end a relationship because they thought they were dying for surgery. Anyway. Any people perceive it differently. Uh, what inspires you to build a room? I build it to uh, solve a, a problem I'm having at that time. Um, like I said, this room here was um, built because somebody I really, really cared about um, basically said goodbye because they thought they were dying and they didn't want to go to hell. I mean, you know, so um, I don't know. It, it relieved, it relieved, it helped to relieve that um, um, sadness that I was having by being able to display it instead of just uh, bottling it all up inside. So, I mean, this room has served its purpose. If it does go, I'm going to be sad because I do like to still come play in it. Um, you know, but uh, it did what it was supposed to do for me. Um, I built it because I needed to build it, not because it needed to exist. How did you feel when you heard Steve DePaulo was lecturing about your work? I'm not good at a lot of things. I'm really not. Um, and and to actually know that uh, I'm being discussed in colleges all over the country, yeah, it, it really does make you feel good. It makes you feel warm, makes you feel uh, successful at something. Um, even if it's just something that can go poof in a heartbeat. I mean, that's that's the only sad thing uh, for me is that uh, all this work I've done, except for on my own hard drive, I mean, all I have to do is just strip it, strip it right off the server, and, and everything that I've done is gone. Um, that's the only depressing thing. It's not lasting artwork. Um, all it is is lasting in people's minds. So that's another reason why I like to do these type of rooms. They do put an imprint on people that they do touch. I mean, it's there forever that way.
This is one of the original avatars, all right? And I started using this avatar and had it painted uh, the way I have it now. I don't know. I guess it just, it. Um, I think it reflects me. I'm soft. I'm very um, um, uh, sensitive. Um, I think I'm naive in a lot of ways. And so I think that this avatar best expresses how I am. Plus, I have white hair, so that, you know, kind of does the trick for me. Uh, I noticed your name is Van Gogh. What kind of avatar do you think Vincent Van Gogh would wear? Oh, now. What kind of avatar? That's a hard one because there are many. Uh, I think he would pay, take, choose the box. Uh, so there's a speaker box. I think he might choose that. And I think that the type of um, of uh, room he would use would be an extremely, um, I think it would be a very abstract, um, bright, extremely colorful room. Um, it would not, I don't think it would have, I think it would have little structure actually. Anyway, thanks for listening to me, Blabber, <laughs> and everybody else. I just wanted to make sure that the art part was definitely... Um, many years ago, I played in a band, and we did a Zeppelin cover. Um, I was uh, struck by a truck, um, lost all of my uh, memory. Um, when I came back from the recovery of the hospital, that um, I remember that I was in love with Zeppelin, and that's the only memory I had is Zeppelin, so Zeppelin became my life. Uh, no, not really. Um... A house is a house, a road is a road. Um, I don't tend to give the real world a great deal of, uh, what's the word? It doesn't really interest me very much. Um, you know, uh, I like to stay in. Occasionally I go out, you know. I went out one day and my frame rate dropped to five, so I come back in. It's a joke, by the way. You know, for some reason, though, in here, it seems like the human faults are even more magnified because the only thing there is to actually actually do in this environment is to deal with yourself in an inner way that goes way beyond what you do out in, out in, the, uh, out in society. I'm not sure if mature is the word. I think, uh, but that's close. Uh, I certainly have always looked at things outside of Traveler like I do in here. I think that's what attracted me so much to this program. Outside of here, I'm, I'd probably do that behind the, the mask that everybody has to wear out there. I probably am like it, and a lot of people are. But outside of here, the only thing it's really done is that it, I have to really uh, concentrate to be the same person, or even nearly the same person, or or uh, to to uh, readapt to the outside world again. Whenever I I am outside a traveler, because I'm in here so much, I became extremely ill, and I've been in here for almost five years, and uh, I didn't really plan it that way, but but it happened, and. and I had an opportunity to set up the, this server to try to preserve this program and, and to 
magnificent work that so many people have done. And uh, it just so happens that it, it worked out along with a, an illness I've had to deal with. And uh, I'm, I think that uh, when I get fully recovered and everything and I, I go out into the world again, I definitely will not see it the, the same as, I've, I, as I did before. Very creative, um, and if I wanted to dye my hair pink, well, then my avatar's hair can be pink too. I mean, yeah, the emotions of the avatars, you know, you can make them sad and mad and happy. So people do know what you're feeling. Well, because before I was a bird, <laughs> and I like uh, to be a you know, a person. Um, because the bird is pretty rough looking. <laughs> so, uh, and I'm not a bird, so. But if I want to be, I can be. Well, um, I've seen, you know, lately, uh, some, some, some of the travel artists like Dominic really nice guy, uh, are wanting to do full-bodied avatar. Um, I, you know, I think he should have the ability to do so, but at the same time, I hate him. I hate him because it ruins the scale of the room. Uh, Travelers has always had these, uh, these avatars that were like uh, heads, you know, and, and so the, the rooms were all, again, we were observing a scale to the rooms. And then when you introduce these full-bodied avatars, that changes the scale of the room. Uh, there are a lot of people who came in from Active Worlds or Black Center, something like that, where they all had full-bodied avatars, and they thought that was a norm. Uh, and they'd, they'd come in here, and, and uh, of course, they'd, they'd pick those first. And, uh, and you'd have a bunch of people, you know, with full-bodied avatars, you know, flying around. Um, you know, it, it would take up more space than the average avatar. Uh, there would be a lot more incidents of ac accidental bonking and stuff like that going on as, as a natural result. Uh, you know, I like the work. Uh, I like the work that he's doing. He's done some really cool avatars, uh, like the hot dog you're wearing. But I don't like it when it really throws off the scale of the room. Um, I think that's rather intrusive. Absolutely, and they're not as expressive as, as the avatars we enjoy now. Uh, you know, I have a mouth that lip syncs when I speak. Uh, the, the, the avatars we use traditionally are very emotive, and they, they were designed to be that way from day one. The community is pretty much going to decide for themselves what they what they want. You know, I think there are other people who think the way I do, and people are going to decide what they want simply by choosing what avatar they wish to wear. And uh, it'll all come out in the wash. This uh, the default avatar as well. Uh, you look like the default avatar on my laptop. Oh wait, we got it now. You look like the Tiki Man. Yeah, sometimes I wear this. So why do you wear this avatar? Well, I usually have my name changed. I'll be I'll be Smitty. I'll change it to a guy named Smitty, and it's uh, just for fun. You know what I mean? I'll I'll run around. Uh, because you never see anybody named Smitty, and and uh, that is just it's just a fun one. Um, some friends of mine they don't like the way this avatar looks; they think it's ugly. And so I'll I'll color it up as ugly as I can and, and fiddle fart around and and tell jokes and just it's just a, a fun thing to play with, you know. Everybody picks on Smitty, you know, and so uh, we'll just uh, kid around with it mainly. It's just a it's just something fun to do. I don't know, Smitty's usually a, um, maybe he's another personality I have, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't do a whole lot, I'll just put this avatar on, I'll usually morph the voice a little bit, and I'll, I'll go up to some of my friends and I'll tell them that their avatar looks horrible, or they don't even know how to paint their avatar, or, you know, I'll tell them it sucks, and, and I'll say, uh, 
you know, I'll just give them a hard time, and they'll they'll say, oh, that's just that Smitty, you know, or they'll, you know, or they won't know. I did it one one time to somebody. I, I dressed up as Smitty, and they didn't know it was me, and I I really had them quite riled up. It was pretty fun. Do your other avatars change your personality as well? No, no, yeah. It's not really a different personality. It's just me having fun. You know, it's not like it's not like I put on an avatar and I, I change my personality. You know, I morph into that person. You know, 100% of the, 99% of the time, I'm just Dominic. You know, I'll, I'll change the avatar and, and kid around with somebody and have some fun, but it's just Dominic behind the avatar. I never come in here with the attitude that it's going. Everything is going to be hunky dory, shall we say? Therefore, I'm. I have. Um, there's been a bit of hell on Traveler. We went through a period uh, in '99 into 2000 where there was a free speech war in here among, uh, among some of the users, and it was felt on all of the servers. And um, some of the servers were ruined and had to be completely redone, et cetera, et cetera. I would say that's a formal tale in here. Uh, have your experiences in Traveler made you more careful about how you talk to people? Uh, not because of my experiences in had these uh, different forums where people could go, um, and they were web-based forums, um, where people would go and slam each other in text. You know what? People normally get along when they're talking in voice. They, they, they used to say the really harsh stuff in text on that board. And, um, and a lot of that had to do with a, a fight between one particular user and one particular server op uh, who hasn't been running a server for a long time and they just uh, they just had at it all the time uh, they had it at it in world and they had at it on the uh, uh, on the web-based forums and all that and it, I wouldn't call it a, a freedom of speech war so much as these two guys were pretty much the ones sparring and uh, everybody else was just kind of sitting on the sidelines watching to see what happened I've had several dreams about being in Traveler the one that I found that was the most fun happened during the free speech wars. And um, of course, I mentioned the servers being damaged. And um, this one night, I had gone to bed and I started having this dream about someone going into Oz's uh, computer, into his server, and his avatar just zoomed right up to them. They could see it on their screen instead of the text and what have you. And it said that you have 10 seconds to get out of my server, and then your computer will blow up. And um, then I woke up. <laughs> uh, see, a lot of people here don't even remember uh, the, the quote-unquote avatar wars. Uh, there was this huge donut-shaped avatar, and I mean it was absolutely massive. Um, that, that would span the width of the, of the, the old gate entrance space. And uh, when you do like something like that, just just turning the avatar w would bonk, uh, you know, tens of people at a time. So that was, that was abusive, uh, you know, just by its, its, its very creation. Some kid came in and uh, he, after he got done bonking everybody and was warned not to, um, you know, you get that sometimes, you get the adolescents in here who are always towing the line. And um, so then he dressed up his avatar painstakingly to look like mine. Uh, then he, he went to his profile and had it had it to read exactly like mine, and I didn't I didn't mind that you know I I wasn't really worried about it. People in the room could hear my voice and they'd know which one was me. Then he went to another room and started raising hell. And uh, yeah, the only the only time somebody ever tries to assume somebody else's identity is to you know perpetrate something bad. There's there's never been any good come of it. I would wake up in fear. 
And then as uh, I had children and um, I started reading them storybooks, I discovered how the spots um, became or came into my dreams. One of the storybooks that I was reading to them was one, uh oh, we're getting attacked here. Hang on a minute. I can't figure out what I mean. I'm running into. Uh, who, who, who. KB, did you get rid of that dude for us, man? The dream if you keep stopping people, I'm going to have to call Oz, and you don't want me to do that. Sorry. Go ahead. If you keep bumping into people, I'm going to have to tell Oz, okay? So just stop it. Yeah, just, um, yeah, that's all right. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry for interrupting you. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. Should I start over? And you know I told you about, yes, there is hackers. Yes, we've been hit several times. But does it get us down? No. we got a backup server. We can be back up and nothing flat because Star sees to that. He makes the servers, and we got it. And we're, like I said, we try to be up 24-7, and that's a challenge because sometimes, the, I mean, it is. It's a challenge to keep things going. I like a challenge. Life is a challenge, and if you don't, you only get out of life what you put in it. And, boy, I'm getting a lot out of life. I love it. I love life. I love people. And I love, I love to be on travel. It's all competition and jealousy and stuff that doesn't need to be here. I mean, come in, talk, have fun, play with the with the graphics, um, and stop getting so dang personal and hateful. <laughs> That's what it is. I mean, uh, there there's three great servers out there, and people used to be able to travel back and forth and back and forth from server to server and, and have a, a good time. Um, then it becomes to where... Um, a lot of people feel like, oh, well, that server operator is going to be upset if I go over here, so I better stay here. And that's where it all starts. Um, you know, who has the most people on the server? That's the best server. Uh, it didn't used to be like that years and years ago. Um, but uh, it's turned into that, and that's a shame. It needs to be under one roof. Um, I, I wish uh, I wish that Bruce would, uh, would see that and somehow manage to, to just give Traveler one big server and uh, not have all these little, or at least not have them all on the same destination page. You know, let each server deal with their own destinations page so you don't see that competition right there in black and white. Um, that would take care of a lot of it and get rid of a lot of the problems in this community. These um, um, internet programs, you will always have the person that comes in that, that wants to be a pain in the butt. Um, we have the ability in Traveler to, to remove people. Um, now the server operators or one of the techs can do it. Um, they now know that um, not to remove somebody unless I ask it, um, unless they become very, very um, annoying, not only for myself, but for the people that are listening. So there was one particular time when this young person came in and he was a real pain in the butt. And I just quickly sent him a message saying, look, you know, um, we're having a church service, feel free to stay. Um, but, you know, if you're going to continue on being a pain, you know, I'll, I'll have you removed. Anyway, uh, he basically sat through the whole uh, um, service, which goes roughly around about an hour. And um, in the end, he came up to me and he asked me um, uh, a question. Um, and the, basically the question is, you know, how do I know that God exists? For anybody to answer that, in my opinion, is almost an, an impossibility. 
because the relationship that we have between ourselves as individuals and God is a very private one. So it wouldn't matter um, what I said to him, giving him my own experiences between myself and God, it really wouldn't answer the question. And interestingly, um, it came to me as a as a um, uh, an explanation, I suppose. And basically, what I said to him was: picture yourself as as a person that's a software developer, and you have just created something like The Sims, and you've created these individuals. But you can actually um, interact with these individuals. You can come in from your real life and go into your uh, software life that you've created and they can see you and, and, and you can see them. And I could see this as a, as a good example of, of the relationship between us and God. God has this, um, he can, <coughs> excuse me, he can move within his own realm, but he um, was at the very beginning able to come and go into our world and his world. And it seemed to hit the nail right on the head for him. He could get an understanding of what my relationship with my Creator is and um, it was it was truly um, a wonderful time now he never came back again um, his his parting comment to me was that you know you've given me so much to absorb now one of the things one of the, the, the huge drawbacks between um, a ministry that I have here on the internet as opposed to in real life is that um, I can never meet the people that I speak to. I can't touch them. Um, I can't, you know, have a face to face with somebody. And he never came back and I don't know whatever happened to him. But the but the, the the main thing that was important in the whole thing was that I didn't preach to him. Um, I gave him an honest answer, and he listened. Now, keep in mind, this is this was a person, and I don't know how old this person was. Um, this was a person that came in that wanted to, to disrupt the church service. He left, um, wanting to know more. What would I do if Traveler disappeared tomorrow? I would, I would just sit down and cry. If you want to know, I'll be honest with you. I would sit down and cry because I, there's nothing like it, and I don't want to go to a text chat program. I don't want to text and write and type. I want to. I, you can't feel the emotions. You can't hear the their voice. You can't tell if they're sad. They're glad. They're happy. You want to hear them talk. You want to hear their expression. You want to know if they're mad, they're glad, and they're happy. Take Traveler, and I would, I, yeah, I'd cry. I would. I'd cry. Because if we lost Traveler, I'd lose a lot of friends that I dearly love. I, I mean, I've grown to love a lot of them. And when I say love them, I, will go, I would go out of my way to do, help them and do anything. I call, I talk to a lot of them on on the phone, long distance. I don't think a thing about paying up and calling. So, um, maybe lost because uh, if you'd have been doing something for five and a half years and it fold up and you'd lose all the contact of some friends you've known, and I don't just have five, fifteen, I got bunches, a lot of people. Wouldn't you want to just sit down and cry? Oh, I would. I'm honest about it. And I hope that it don't Fold up. And we'll be, Star and I will be doing everything we can to keep this server running. I mean, this server's going to run, run, and uh, we're going to, we're working and and keeping it. And uh, we hope nothing ever happens to Trevor. I do. Um, I would, I would be hurt. I have a lot of friends on here. Um, I would be quite lost. Uh, this is uh, like a second life to me. After I take a shower, brush my teeth, eat my lunch, I mean, this is where I spend most of my day. I mean, this is a big part of my life. Uh, people on here are like my family. And I've only been there for three weeks. 
Hmm. Well, first of all, let me say this, that um, I come in here to better myself. So I leave my name and my reality, you know, in a chair over there somewhere. Um, so I try and be a better person. I try and raise the standard. Um, secondly, let me say that I have this weird idea that somewhere down the line in the future, someone will be able to extract your entire conscious state and plunk it on the Internet so that I could be sitting here talking to my great-great-great-grandchildren, telling them about, you know, how we used to have gasoline engines and telephones that had cords on them and things like that, uh, even after the physical is gone, that a transference to the conscious state, a Tron scenario, could be possible. But, um, and I also want to say that between being able to hear someone's voice and seeing the animation, the reality of, of, of body language and, and uh, of, your, of your, your own space um, is so much more powerful than anything I've ever seen anywhere else. I don't know. I, I think it's possible that, that somewhere down the road uh, we may find a way to have a, a bot emulate our avatar. I don't know. There's all kinds of possibilities here. New things happen happening every day. It's strange. Yeah, it certainly is strange. I find that story really interesting. What comes to mind for me is that uh, Edison, just before he designed, made a machine, uh, or tried to make a machine to contact the dead, but he died before making it. That's one reason we, we thought of this question, because he was trying to deal with uh, spirituality and the telecommunications environment. Do you have any more thoughts about that? tough one. Uh, you got me on that, but uh, I'd like to think that, uh, I mean, there have been a few travelers that we know that have, have died, and uh, they will rem be remembered for a long time. Rooms have been made in there, you know, in eulogy to them. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll keep pictures of their avatars as we remembered them. Um, But as far as communing with the dead, um, I don't know. Maybe they get an internet connection in heaven. Maybe we'll uh, we'll be seeing some of these people. <laughs>